righty. As people join us, thank you all, um, Indiana students, for joining us this evening. My name is Hillary. I'll be facilitating this session for Franklin College. We have our friends Kelly and Chris with us. We'll introduce themselves in a few moments. But on behalf on Indiana Association for College Admissions Counseling and Stratospan, we're so glad that you are joining us either live or in the recorded version. Uh, just a few housekeeping items for anybody who is joining us. Um, if you would like to ask questions, we cannot see or hear you. Your mic is off and your camera is off and you cannot control that. Uh, so we ask kindly that you use the Q&A um, to submit any questions for Kelly and Chris this evening. Um, you can see that button at the bottom or the top of your screen. If you are interested in seeing more sessions or perhaps seeing any recorded sessions of anything that you did miss, please head to the NACAC website. It's inacac.org slash virtual dash college dash exploration. It's right there on the screen and I will share that website with everybody at the end of the session as well. But for now, I will go ahead and turn it over to our friends at Franklin College for a great presentation and we'll see you at the end. Thank you so much. All right, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly Casey. I am an admissions counselor over at Franklin College. I kind of deal with uh, students from East Central Indiana all the way down to Southern Indiana for a little bit. Um, and then I have all of Ohio students as well. So if you're interested in Franklin and you're kind of in those territories, you're gonna be working with me this year. Um, I've been at Franklin for just a little over a year now, officially hit my year marker. So proud adopted Grizzly. What about you, Chris? My name is Chris Wilhelm. Make sure, yep, my mic is off. Uh, my name is Chris Wilhelm. I am one of the senior admissions counselors at Franklin. This will be my third travel season. Uh, so been here around a little bit. I'm also a Franklin College graduate, graduated back in 2014. Uh, so kind of always been a grizzly with that. My territory is the north side of Indianapolis. So kind of Hamilton, Boone, Clinton County, Tipton. Uh, and then I also have select uh, schools in Indianapolis and on the south side of Indianapolis as well. And then for my out-of-state territory, I cover the northeast uh, kind of New England area of the country. So any students in there, uh, I am your counselor. Perfect. Since Chris is an alumni, we're going to kind of start off with like a little Q&A and then we'll get into our presentation. All right, Chris, this is like the biggest question I have and it's number one. Um, what made you choose Franklin? So for Franklin, for me, I grew up on the south side of Indianapolis. I actually have a grandmother, two aunts, and an uncle within about four blocks of campus. Uh, so it was always kind of in my backyard. Uh, and it was one of those things where it was very comfortable, very homey. And coming from a bigger high school, going to a much smaller school with smaller class sizes, actually getting to know the professors a little bit uh, was a big interest of mine. Uh, and kind of one of those big draws where just when I stepped on campus after visiting a lot of different schools, it just felt like home, just something clicked. Uh, just the way people acted, it was a very like fun uh, kind of family atmosphere the whole time I was on campus. Uh, so it was just something about it really clicked and I was able to kind of uh, hop into the major that I wanted to kind of pursue at the time uh, and was able to kind of participate in a lot of the social clubs with Greek life and athletics that I wanted to participate in as well. What was your major? And then what are Franklin's most popular majors, if you could say? Yeah, so with me, uh, I, was, I was kind of one of the unique examples where I came in as a freshman, like, yes, I'm going to major in business. Uh, with thinking I was going to be an accountant, I was going to be in finance. And I very quickly realized I didn't want to keep taking that many more math classes. Yeah. Uh, so I actually was one of the students who changed majors uh, into my sophomore year uh, with it. So I switched over to psychology and sociology. Uh, ended up kind of finding a love and a passion for those classes from uh, at Franklin, we're a liberal arts school. So it's one of the, our kind of liberal arts requirements that you take either a sociology or psychology class. Uh, so lucky enough, uh, I took one of the psych classes, really kind of uh, meshed well with the professor and really kind of fell in love with that subject. And that led to that change of kind of that path for me for it. Uh, some of our most popular majors at Franklin uh, funny enough, our business and psychology, there are two of our biggest ones at Franklin, as well as kind of anything in the biology, the medical side uh, with that. And then two of our more kind of namesake or kind of our uh, big ones that a lot of people know us for, us for is journalism and elementary education as well. Perfect. I was going to say, just because you said you changed your major, how like so many students change their major when they're in college, that's just like part of life. You're on your own. If you haven't made your decision, like your own decisions, I guess, until now, it's kind of bound to happen. If you don't change your major, you might change your minor or like pick up a random minor that you never thought about. That's part of the beauty of college. Uh, but at Franklin, we actually have your freshman year as kind of an exploratory year anyway. So you don't have to like put pen to paper on what your major is until like the end of your freshman year, the beginning of your sophomore year, which is really nice. 
All right. Um, what do you think are some of Franklin's strengths? Some of Franklin's strengths, it kind of goes back to some of the reasons I kind of picked Franklin being a smaller school. Uh, it gives a lot more flexibility in kind of intimate settings with the classes where, again, you know your professors, there's no TAs, uh, it's there in class with you every single day. Uh, a lot of times, I know some people kind of uh, laugh at the idea of being those small classes where you almost have like assigned seating and attendance, but it's those kind of personal notes where if you're not in class, a professor notices that you're not there because they know you by name, they know where you sit, uh, they know if you're part of a sports team or in a sorority or fraternity, they know a little bit more about you than at your kind of traditional bigger schools where you're just kind of a person sitting somewhere in class with it. Uh, so it was really nice, uh, kind of that more one on one kind of nature with it, where professors, if you have a question uh, before or after class, uh, they have office hours and their office is usually right down the hall from where they teach, where you can pop in, ask a question, kind of get a little bit of help with class or just kind of get to know your professors on a little bit more of a personal level of, hey, how are you? How are they doing? Uh, kind of checking with them because that's something that they want to develop those relationships with the students as well. Uh, I know it was always fun going to different campus events and seeing faculty and staff kind of in the audience or in the stands watching uh, a football game at the pep rallies uh, or at like one of the Greek uh, kind of fundraising events. They might be one of the judges. It was always fun seeing them uh, involved on campus in a way outside the classroom. Perfect. What was your favorite class that had to do with your major and your favorite class that had nothing to do with your major necessarily Ooh. and why? I know. My favorite class that had to do with my major definitely... Ooh, that's a that's a tough one mm -hmm. probably social psych uh, social right. psychology it was a, a lot of fun we got to do a lot of kind of goofy experiments throughout our class uh where a lot of times it was studying some different experiments or different types of experiments that kind of famous ones uh throughout psychology on it and we got to go and kind of recreate those on small scales kind of out in public mm -hmm. uh so it was silly ones where it'd be like all right a group of three people go to the mall and conduct some of these experiments and take notes on how people react to it uh, some of my favorite ones were uh, we had to go to the ca the big kind of uh, cafeteria uh, or kind of uh, food court, I guess that's probably the better way to say it, the food court at the mall. And we had to all go order, get food. And instead of sitting down on the chairs and eating off the, like the, the trays and food on the table, we had to sit on the tables and eat off the, off the chairs with the trays and kind of see those different dynamics. Uh, or we had to go in an elevator and face backwards the entire ride uh, and just kind of see how people reacted to some of those kind of funny, uh, quirky things. So definitely the experiments were a lot of fun in those classes. With it, my favorite class that was not my major uh, was actually my art credit. Uh, I went in, uh, like before with uh, kind of uh, the liberal arts curriculum, all students have to take at least one art credit. Uh, I chose with one of my roommates at the time to take ceramics. Having never taken ceramics before, thought we would just take it, all right, we're gonna take that one semester, be done with it, kind of get done with our art credit as I'm not very an artsy person ended up taking four years of ceramics, oh, <laughs> which wow. just never really stopped. Uh, Cause it was a lot of fun. It was almost that stress relief class for me at the end of the day uh, where you got to go in and make pottery. So it was really cool making some vases, making different uh, kind of uh, keepsakes uh, as you will uh, that we got to either sell at the end of the year or keep. And I actually now decorate myself and my family's kind of, we have like in all of our houses, we have a little like pieces of our pottery uh, that we kind of decorate or put flowers in or put on shelves. So it was really fun kind of getting to keep a, a physical thing from college that I got to make. No, that's really cool. I feel like everybody needs that one stress relieving class. Like, I mean, when I was in college, I had a makeup class and like that, I know that sounds dumb, but like theater background, sociology background, we got to play with all different kinds of makeup. Everybody needs some class that you could just get to play around and have fun. Well, I definitely homework, understand. The homework is always fun in those classes too. Yeah, yeah. No, homework doesn't always have to be boring. Um, we're going to kind of talk about internships and stuff later on in the presentation anyways, but because every student at Franklin either has to do an internship or a research kind of study, uh, what was yours when you were in college? So for mine, I actually uh, got to go work with a local nonprofit uh, in terms of kind of researching and getting to deal with some of their data. So uh, my background in kind of starting in business and starting with a little bit more numbers on it, uh, I kind of factored into working on some of their data side of things. So it was uh, a couple other students, there was multiple multiple of us at the internship. So some of us were going and doing the experiments. Some of us are collecting the data. I was the person kind of uh, collecting all that data, putting it through and uh, kind of analyzing it, uh, which is a lot of fun. And it was data that we actually got to kind of see used through that nonprofit, uh, through some court cases. Uh, so it was really neat kind of see not just, oh, we're doing this fun project that who knows what comes of it, of getting to see actual lawyers and judges and big nonprofits use our data uh, and kind of see how it affected people's lives in a way. So it was really neat kind of to see some real world impact of being 18 to 22 year olds working on a project together. Yeah, awesome. 
Um, what was your typical day like as a student on Franklin College's campus? My typical day is I am not a morning person. Uh, so I always avoided most 8 a.m.s as best I could. And I was very lucky that the psychology and sociology department, uh, my two majors, they were not morning people either. Uh, so I was very lucky that most of those classes were in the afternoon. So typically I'd wake up 9 a.m., get up, get some breakfast. I usually have like a 10 and 11 o'clock class, uh, kind of knock out those early afternoon classes with it, uh, go to lunch, work on some homework in the afternoon, usually uh, fill a little bit of time, relax, hang out with some of my fraternity brothers. Uh, and then usually have one or two afternoon classes at either like one o'clock, two o'clock or three o'clock, just depending on the days. With that, I worked uh, as an assistant coach or student assistant with actually the lacrosse, the women's lacrosse team uh, when I was in college. Uh, so my evenings were going to practice, helping out with that, kind of uh, helping with drills, working with the coaches and kind of organizing some of that as well. Uh, some nights I would have study groups or some nights we would have fraternity meetings. Uh, so it was usually a pretty decently organized day from about 10 a.m. all the way through about maybe eight o'clock at night with lots of little gaps in between where I could take a nap, go get lunch or dinner, study, uh, or just kind of hang out with friends. Uh, but each day at Franklin was always a little bit different, which made it nice where it's not the same classes you're taking every single day, kind of like in high school where it's always like eight to four. Uh, some days I had four classes, uh, a couple of semesters, I had no classes on either on Wednesdays or Fridays, which made it really nice uh, as a day where I could relax, have a part-time job, do some work study hours uh, to make a little bit extra money or just go home and see family for a little bit. Well, you already kind of answered what you do on the weekends <laughs> um, because you said you were in a fraternity. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we're in the slides anyways, but why did you choose the fraternity that you chose? The fraternity that I chose, uh, similar to Franklin, uh, just kind of something clicked about it with the guys uh, in that fraternity. Uh, the male side with fraternities versus the sororities is a little bit more informal at Franklin. So it's less going and meeting all three kind of in a, uh, in a row in the same night with the sororities. Uh, with the fraternities, it was just kind of seeing who you kind of hung out with and just some different circles with it, going to some more informal style events. Uh, and I just clicked with those guys a little bit better. They were uh, a lot of them the same major as me, a lot of them. I kind of had the same background as me with uh, athletics. Uh, so we just kind of clicked and kind of became quick friends. A few of the guys who lived in my freshman resident hall that in the same actual hall as me ended up going into the same fraternity. So it was nice seeing some familiar face, uh, faces from moving day and from some of my freshman courses. Uh, but it just really clicked and it was a fun way to kind of stay involved uh, in another aspect in college because uh, Franklin, we have most students are involved in two, three, four, even five or six different things of uh, most students aren't involved in just like, oh, this is the one thing I do. Most students do a lot. Uh, so it was nice having that other outlet other than just classes or work or working with lacrosse. Uh, it was nice kind of having that group of guys I could kind of hang out with. And then my junior and senior year, it was nice to be able to live in the fraternity house as well, as opposed to giving me another option other than the residence halls. No, well, a lot of our students are very over-involved. So you literally <laughs> nail on the head. That is true. If you could pick your favorite place on campus, where would it be? My favorite place when I was a student would definitely uh, actually be our cafeteria. Uh, the, uh, the student center kind of hanging out there. It's the big kind of student hub. Uh, there's a running joke with our students that we all still call it Saga, uh, where it's the old name of the food vendor from about 30 years ago that they have not worked with the school to any capacity since then. Uh, but students still to this day are like, hey, let's go hang out in Saga, where they would just kind of sit, eat meals, watch some TV, and just kind of relax. That's kind of a big common area. Now as a faculty member and alumni, my favorite spot is definitely one of the study rooms up in uh, the New Science Center. Uh, the big glass study rooms, about three, four, uh, three or four floors up. Uh, there's very quiet, you get to look out like over Dane Mall, over the big stretch of campus, uh, where you can kind of see all of the greenery and all of the kind of just the beauty of campus. And it's a very quiet, relaxing place. Uh, so almost the exact opposite of what the cafeteria tends to be at times where it's a little noisy. <laughs> No, the Science Center is just a really pretty place in general. <laughs> like that building, it's probably like, I mean, I didn't even go to Franklin, but it's like my favorite building on campus. It's so pretty. I like to just walk through there. It's so nice. Um, I lost my place. Oh, um, career services. What kinds of uh, resources did you use when you were on campus? Yeah, so with career services, uh, it's really nice. It's actually ran by uh, Kirk Bixler. He is the head of career services. Uh, with it in uh, the joke I almost always make, and I know I still see freshmen kind of joke about it today, uh, is he is known for sending a lot of emails. Uh, as his job is to help students pair up with internships and jobs. Uh, so the running joke is almost as a freshman or as a sophomore where you're not quite looking at those yet. 
is he tends to be one of the more uh, annoying people on campus with the amount of emails they send you. Uh, but as you turn into your junior and senior year, as you're definitely focusing more in on landing those internships or getting ready to start looking for jobs out of college, he becomes your best friend uh, as he is always looking to kind of help pair students up with that. Uh, we always say that one of our best resources at Franklin are our students and our alumni, as a lot of times those alumni, once they graduate and go out into that working world, they're who we're pairing up uh, current students with for internships or going to look, hey, go work at this company or take a look at your interview here is we have a lot of uh, students who have ended up in this organization or this company and it's kind of a nice infrastructure with it. Uh, being a smaller school with a smaller alumni network, it's always fun to kind of see a friendly face or when you're interviewing, hey, we might have lived in the same dorm or had those same professors, uh, a little bit tighter connections coming from a smaller school. Yeah, um, obviously they're in the world of COVID, we are in a different world, unfortunately. Um, but when there are actually activities and um, events on campus, uh, what was your favorite activity or event that happened on campus when you were a student? There's a lot of fun events on campus. Homecoming is always big. The pep rallies uh, are always a big hit. My favorite were actually some of the more uh, inside stage events, either kind of the hypnotist was always a very, very popular one, seeing your friends go up on stage and get kind of hypnotized to act like a chicken, where it's always very entertaining because there's always that one friend who's like, oh, I don't believe in this. I'm not going to be hypnotized. And they are always the ones to get picked. And then they always actually get hypnotized, which is always fun to see. Uh, but my favorite is definitely the Lips for Literacy events. Uh, it is uh, done by one of the sororities on campus, the Pi Beta Phi uh, sorority. Uh, and they put on a lip singing contest where uh, years ago it started as much more of a one or two people on stage lip singing to a quick song for a minute, two minutes, uh, to now through large part to my specific fraternity, turned almost into more of stage performances of 15 to 35 minute long re, uh, recreations of movies. Oh, I love uh, it. So through my four years, we were lucky enough to redo uh, Wicked, Harry Potter, a Disney medley, and Space Jam. Uh, so it was very fun kind of getting to put together these fun stage performances uh, with your fraternity brothers where you're staying up late and practicing uh, to get ready for this for a big fundraiser for a good cause for uh, children's literacy. So it was all going to different uh, organizations to help kids read. Love that. Service and leadership, big things on Franklin's campus. Um, how easy would you say it is to get a, um, a campus, like a job on campus? Super easy. There's more jobs than people with that is kind of what I always, always say to kind of prospective students uh, or the students that I work with. Every organization on campus has a work study budget built into kind of their overall budget with it, uh, where some jobs are as simple as kind of sitting in the library at a desk, answering some phone calls or kind of helping with uh, the printer when it malfunctions is usually I feel like what they do most. Uh, or some of them are working in our admissions offices, ambassadors giving tours, all of the sports teams. Uh, have different work study jobs for maybe being a uh, working the soccer game of being one of the ball boy or the ball girl on the sidelines who tosses in an extra ball once one gets kicked out maybe working the camera uh, for Grizz TV uh, but there's a lot of different kind of work study jobs on campus available to students uh, that really kind of help with that as it's called work study balance of where you work a little bit or able to sit relax get some of your studies done a little bit as well. I always tell students that are like really afraid they're not going to get a job. I'm always like, listen, our office is hiring. So if you're seeing this and you're going to be a future Grizzly, come to admissions. We will hire you. Being a uh, definitely one of the better jobs on campus. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right. This is the last question and then we'll get into the PowerPoint. Um, but because you're a coach and you were a former athlete, tell us a little bit about uh, Division Three athletics and how to get involved. Um, what's the process like? Did you enjoy being an, a D3 athlete slash, I guess, coach? <laughs> yeah, so D3 athletics, uh, the big thing that makes it different is with the scholarships. Uh, there's no athletic scholarships with D3 athletics. It is definitely much more designed for that true student athlete kind of balance uh, with it, where uh, you're only able to kind of practice so much in your season and so much out of your own season uh, with it to really kind of balance in those classes and that academic side. Uh, to definitely get involved with it, the first step I always tell students is, hey, if you're interested in playing, reach out to the coaches. Uh, all of the coaches and the contact information for their whole staff is on our athletic website, franklingrizzlies.edu. Uh, with that, so you can always log in, kind of take a look at the team, reach out to the coach, or some of the best ways is all the teams have a athletic recruiting questionnaire uh, where you're able to give the coaches a little bit of contact information, some of your athletic background. Uh, and the coaches are always really great about kind of reaching back, usually in a couple of days, or so where it's either the head coach or an assistant coach might give you a call or send you an email. 
uh, with that. Uh, but a lot of times uh, coaches, just like the other divisions, they're out recruiting, uh, kind of finding that new talent to compete in our conference, the HCAC. Uh, some of our uh, more established or kind of namesake teams that are always winning titles and such are football teams, swimming and diving. Uh, and our baseball team have all been really kind of stellar uh, teams performing at the national level in the NCAA tournaments here recently. And as well as uh, women and men's soccer as well have also kind of won their conferences here recently. Awesome. All right, we will get started with this presentation. There we go. All right, can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Perfect. Uh, so hopefully you can see some of our numbers here that we're really proud of. Uh, so uh, Franklin College has a, an average class size of about 15. So kind of like Chris said earlier, um, smaller classroom settings, which is probably not too different from COVID right now, uh, but we're like that pretty much all the time. Your freshman year, it might be a little bit bigger just because you're gonna have some introductory classes, some coursework outside of your main area of study. Uh, but then once you grow with your cohort of students in whatever major you decide, um, they're gonna get smaller and smaller and more focused on that specific major for you. Uh, we have a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one, which might not seem like a big deal to some people, but for some people who are looking for more of that one on one connection with their professor um, to really build relationships and get connections for the future. A lot of people like that number. <laughs> uh, we are, for those of you who don't know where Franklin is, we are located in Franklin, Indiana, which is 20 miles south of Indianapolis. Um, it literally is maybe a 30 minute drive to downtown Indianapolis, I feel like from, yeah, from Franklin, easily 30 minutes. Um, and then we have about a thousand students on campus, uh, which might not sound like a lot, but I think we're, we're small but mighty. So it's nice. Uh, each year we kind of bring in roughly 3, 320, 330, I feel like that's kind of our average number bringing in. But yeah, we'll go to the next slide. Here is our list of majors. And I don't know if you want to like do one and one. I don't know how you want to do this. We'll kind of figure it out as we go. Uh, but this is our list of majors. We have 50 majors, uh, 40 minors. Everything with a um, an asterisk next to it is also considered a minor. Uh, we also have a list of pre-professional programs as well and some graduate programs. And also our new master's programs. Yeah. All right, the pursuit. Um, I don't know how you want to go about this. Do you want to talk a little bit about the pursuit or do you want me to and then you want to talk about launch? I'll say if you want to handle the pursuit, I can take launch. Perfect. So we've already kind of sort of talked about scaffold underground, well, scaffolding undergraduate research. Um, like I said earlier, every single student on Franklin's campus is required to do either a research opportunity or an internship opportunity. Um, so the ability to do undergraduate research is crazy. <laughs> um, most of the time when you go to a bigger institution, you can't do that until you're a grad student. Um, so the fact that you're able to do that as a Franklin College undergraduate is really unique. I think personally, I mean, I went to a small school, but not this small, and you're really able to take what you want to research and kind of go with it. I know from just the amount of professors that I've talked to here, um, they really push you to kind of study something that you're interested in. So if you were really interested in the life of dogs, we have a class about that. If you're really interested in about something small that has to do with dogs, go with a research project and like just go with it. Um, your professors will push you, so that's awesome. Cohesive professional development. We'll kind of talk about that with lunch. Um, I always think of like the professional development side when I think of pivot. Uh, so you'll get some opportunities through internships as well as some of the workshops that we offer here uh, to grow professionally before you actually have to be in the work world, I guess. Um, overt technology integration. So we try to prepare our students to think outside of the box. You're going to do more than just memorize text when you're in college. Um, maybe you study for the test in high school, but in college you can't always do that. That's just part of the real world. Um, so we teach our students to think on their feet um, and learn to kind of grow with technology. Think of how much we've used technology in just the last like 10 months, all of 2020. Uh, <laughs> there are jobs out there that I didn't even know existed until this year when so many things became online. Um, so we try to prepare our students to grow with the technology of today and tomorrow. Immersive and applied experiences. We'll talk about that. I'll let you talk about that on the launch light anyways. Um, so you'll hear about that anyways. Uh, but relevant and responsive liberal arts. 
we are a liberal arts institution. Um, I know you and I both kind of had a different, like a different experience with like, oh yeah, we took this class and fell in love with it, or we took took a class and then fell in love with this major or minor or something like that. Um, you will have coursework outside of your main area of study. That's just the liberal arts part of it. Um, you will become a critical thinker while you're here because you will be forced, like I said, to think outside of the box and not memorize things just for a test, uh, but just think on your own. So that's kind of where the liberal arts comes into it. And then the robust first year experience, which is launch. I'll let you take it away. So with launch, it is our kind of reinvigorated and kind of rebuilt freshman seminar. Uh, so it's no longer kind of that traditional freshman kind of one uh, one on or one hundred one class that you're kind of more familiar with. I know I and Kelly, you probably took uh, something very similar, a freshman one hundred one class. Uh, and it actually starts with registration day. So kind of getting to campus, you and your family, uh, kind of working with them and going through of looking at your schedule, planning out those coursework. Uh, and learning a lot about what that freshman year is going to look at at your registration of kind of starting to plan out that semester. Uh, we always include the families in on that as well because the families are kind of part of that whole transition to college. Uh, a lot of times it is a first generation student or it might be the last one, the baby of the family going off to college uh, and things might have changed from the first students to the last student. So it's always kind of working with them, uh, that whole family support system that we know a lot of times goes into uh, kind of sending someone off to college. Uh, freshman week uh, and that welcome week when students are moving in, uh, is always kind of a busy time on campus. So we wanna make sure the freshmen actually move in a little bit ahead of the kind of returning upperclassmen students uh, as they'll kind of meet with their kind of ori uh, their orientation group, uh, their first uh, freshman year seminar and their launch lab mentors uh, with that. So they're gonna be meeting with some of those resources and some of those different mentorship groups uh, a little bit ahead of time to get some familiarity of, all right, where are the different resources on campus? Where am I gonna be meeting? What is kind of the layout of campus like? Uh, and so they can start getting used to that schedule as well. As we know, time management is one of the biggest adjustments that kind of students have when going to college. Uh, instead of just waking up eight to four, kind of being in school all day, it's all right, they have to remember to wake up on their own, go to class, make it to class on time, go to lunch, and then go back to class uh, when they have all that kind of different uh, things to balance throughout the day. Their first year seminar in launch labs uh, is one of the things that I was always really excited about when I saw that they kind of changed this up. Uh, it's now a three times a week kind of more topical course uh, for the students to get involved in uh, with it. Uh, so they're going to be a little bit more focused on kind of what resources are on campus and what students need to be successful of kind of learning what those resources are and getting familiar with how to use them through a fun topical class like uh, superheroes and comic books was one of the more recent ones. And then murder mysteries and kind of the, the murder mystery podcast kind of big uh, boom that's happened here in the past couple of years. So there's a couple more topical based classes that students have an interest in. Uh, to be able to learn, hey, I want to go and get help with my writing. I have help with a math assignment and not just knowing what those resources are, but being comfortable enough to actually go and use them. Uh, so that was one of the things I was really excited about through our launch labs and first year seminars. And then immersive term, as we will kind of touch on here in a little bit, uh, we are on a trimester schedule with Franklin. So it'll start out the end of August and run through about the middle of December. And then spring won't pick up until February, run through the end of May right in the middle of the month of January is our immersive term. So freshmen on campus uh, will take a little bit more of a hands-on class that first year there. Uh, my class that I took my freshman year, my now wife talked me into taking modern fairy tales and literature. Uh, so as most people know me, probably wouldn't have been the first class that I would have picked, but it ended up being a lot of fun. It was studying the old uh, kind of Disney fairy tales, the Hans Christian Andersen, the big leatherback books are the only books I actually kept from my undergrad. Uh, and it was a very fun hands-on class where we got to make a movie the last week of it. Uh, but some of them are more film-based classes, some are nonprofit based some are more kind of sports-based, uh, so a lot of different variety with that. Mine was definitely more of a film class, and it was taught by two math professors who just had a big interest in that area of study. Uh, and then Pivot, which I wish we would have had when I was a student here, it wraps up the last couple of days of our immersive term. Uh, it is an on-campus kind of professional development days uh, where students are able to pick four, five, or six kind of different little small 30 minutes or hour sessions. Uh, where they can go and learn uh, kind of almost like life skills that they often might not learn in a traditional classroom. Uh, and they're taught by faculty and staff on campus. Some of them uh, are very hands-on of, all right, I'm gonna learn how to kind of dress professionally for an interview, how to work on my resume. Some of them are a little bit more silly and fun. Uh, 101 Ways to Make Ramen is actually taught by our head of financial aid. Uh, our head of security taught students how to change a tire. Uh, and surprisingly, one of the most popular ones from these past couple of years has been how to file your taxes, taught by one of the accounting professors where a lot of students, we were really surprised and very proud that they kind of had that ingenuity to know like, you know what, I'm gonna to need to know this information. Uh, so students have been kind of working and going to some of these fun little pivot sessions to learn some different things for when they graduate. 
those are definitely important skills to have. Um, okay, so uh, we'll kind of breeze through this slide. I was gonna say, cause it's literally gonna be broken down in the next couple ones. Um, but we believe at Franklin that you can study anywhere. You can literally learn wherever you are. So at home, obviously right now with a pandemic that is very relevant, um, especially with the amount of schools that are having to do online learning. Um, so you can obviously learn here on campus. You can learn downtown Indianapolis. So many students get to do um, internships or research opportunities downtown in Indianapolis since we're right there, um, as well as studying abroad. So here are a list of some of our most popular uh, locations for uh, our internships, at least around here and within uh, the Indianapolis area. Um, and then where was where did you say your internship was? Mine was actually with the Johnson County Courthouse. So mine was very local, kind of close to campus. So yeah. it was nice each day, kind of after classes, just getting to go downtown to the courthouse and work with them. No, the bright, like one of the bright sides of like, if you do an internship within Franklin, um, you're literally a five minute walk to downtown Franklin, <laughs> like just walking, you, it's so easy. So if you have a car on campus, obviously you could take that. Or if you don't have a car on campus, it's so, so easy to get there. Um, but yeah, we've just had a lot of student success in, the, in this list of internships studying abroad. I didn't even ask you this question. I meant to. Did you get to take a study abroad opportunity? Yes, I did. It was definitely one of my favorite kind of experiences. Uh, while I was in college, my senior year in our immersive term, uh, I was lucky enough to go to Ireland and Scotland for the month of January and studies uh, the class title, I believe it was sports and culture and the impact on British culture. Uh, so it was very fun uh, to go to. We went to soccer games, rugby matches. We got to play with a professional rugby team. Uh, and just kind of some of our assignments were, all right, go as a class down to the local pub and watch locals kind of watch sports and see how different it is from kind of an American culture. So it was really fun getting to see some of that different side. Uh, and one of the unique things about Franklin is since they're month long courses, they're meant to be a much more immersive where you're kind of living there. So we had to do our laundry, make our own food, kind of stay uh, not just in like a dorm, but like stay in like little mini apartments. So it was much more like we were living abroad for a month. Uh, getting a little bit more immersed in the culture where it was we would go to class have some assignments and we would have some free time throughout the day where we could go explore shop uh, get to know the locals so it was a, definitely a great experience i always think it's so important to like learn something other than your own culture you know just so you can gain perspective i feel like that's a huge once again a huge part of liberal arts um no but i know last year i talked to a couple of ambassadors that got to go to japan last year back when we were able to travel unfortunately this year is once again really weird because of covid um, but they were able to do uh, or study architecture and art while they were there. And it's just, I think it's really fun if you really want to do something like service oriented, you can go do something like build, I don't know, build something for a project, you know, abroad, or you can literally study art and architecture or something like that, which I think is just really fun. Well, but also you don't even realize how like young our country is until you leave it you know what I mean so oh we definitely the big aha moment for us on the trip and like going to the United Kingdom where their culture is again very similar to ours so it wasn't too big of a shift but we were there uh, our group got there uh, a little bit ahead of some of the other students like about a day ahead uh because there was a big blizzard that threw off some of our travel on our departure uh, but we got there and so we went to explore the first day and we ended up on a castle and we were just kind of standing around like this castle is older than the United States uh, so yeah. it was just an aha moment of like, wow, this is where we are. Yeah, no, that is, that's insane. I always just, like I said, I always push that just if you can go study abroad in college. Also financial aid will take care of a big chunk of it too. So it's, I recommend Lots it. Of scholarships to help kind of figure that out. Yes, absolutely. Living on campus. All right. So we have four different resident halls at Franklin, uh, three campus homes, and then about 70% of our students actually live on campus. Uh, we do have a rule that if you're not within Marion or Johnson County, you do have to be within 30 minutes away um, in order to live off campus your freshman through senior well your freshman through junior year uh, once you earn your wow cannot talk your senior credits you can officially move off campus if you want to now you lived on campus do you want to talk about like I guess the, how housing was for you in whatever resident hall slash fraternity house you lived in yeah so I actually uh being local I could have commuted uh, but I definitely wanted that on-campus experience of kind of getting away from home living on my own uh, so I definitely enjoyed living in the residence halls. Uh, I lived in them uh, for my freshman year. So I lived in Elsie Hall, the main freshman resident hall, uh, where I had a roommate uh, for that whole freshman year, uh, someone I got to know. Uh, he went to uh, kind of Greenwood High School, so another local school where we kind of got to know each other throughout it. Um, it was really nice having kind of free laundry located in the resident hall. The cafeteria is just kind of literally right across the street. And then with Franklin's campus, it was all, like I'd wake up late in the morning. So again, not a morning person. 
and I would make it to class in three or four minutes. So it always made it super easy and convenient. Uh, my sophomore and junior year, I lived in one of the fraternity houses, which is right on the edge of campus. Uh, so again, super quick walk. Uh, it was a lot of fun living with a lot of my close friends uh, in different capacities, uh, very much where there's always one of us every year who kind of became that house mom of making sure all of us were like doing our chores of cleaning the kitchen, sweeping the rugs, of taking like mowing the yard of uh, it was very much like you and some friends living in a house after you graduate of having those res grown up responsibilities that oftentimes people don't quite think about. Uh, and then my senior year, uh, as you mentioned before, when you have senior level credits, you're uh, able to live off campus. Uh, right next to my fraternity house was an apartment complex owned by an alumni who rents it out to just seniors every single year, uh, still does to this day. So I actually lived in my own off campus apartment for my last year of getting that true sense of living on my own, having to pay rent every month, having to pay my water and electric bill. Uh, so it was definitely a fun stepping stone into kind of when I graduated college, having to move into my first true adult apartment. <laughs> No, I always recommend students live on campus at least their first year. If you're like kind of on the rocks on it, do it. If you don't like it, you can always change your mind. But like if you if you do it, like you'll see how close you are to the resources on campus. Like I would prefer to get up and walk to campus or to class than like get up, drive, find parking, do all of that stuff. It's just not as fun. Oh, definitely. All right, clubs and organizations. Um, all right, so we have over fifty organizations on on Franklin's campus. Um, we already kind of talked about Greek life. Greek life is like the biggest one I feel like that like most people are in um like about 40 percent I feel like of students mm -hmm. are like involved in Greek life and if not 50. Um we have five fraternities three sororities like I said a couple of campus homes some of those are fraternity houses uh FC Religious Life Black Student Union Grizzly Pride Alliance we have a whole list on our website um what are some of the most popular other than Greek life would you say? Some of the most popular ones tend to be a lot of the more kind of silly social clubs a lot of times, or some of the more ser servant oriented ones uh, that you kind of mentioned, uh, Black Student Union, FC Religious Life, Passion for Pause is one of the really popular ones that I was, uh, I was never a member of, but I was very grateful for their work every year. Uh, yeah. They put on uh, kind of petting zoos three to four times a year for students, uh, and they always schedule them right around the time of midterms and finals. So they work with our kind of student health organization on campus uh, and kind of the counseling center where you go take your math final or your business uh, stats final, and then you go play with a puppy afterwards for 30 minutes, uh, get that rush of dopamine and kind of just cheer you up after kind of stressing and studying all week. So it was always a lot of fun to kind of work with that organization. Uh, and then I know on the next slide, it gets into some of the more uh, service-based and fundraising ones or more academic ones. Uh, Riley Dance Marathon is always definitely one of our biggest ones now. It was started by a freshman, I believe about seven or eight years ago now. Uh, where she came in and she said, you know what, you don't have this. I loved doing it at my high school and she was a Riley baby. Uh, so she started Riley Dance Marathon. And last year, I think it raised, oh, I want to say it was about $30,000 for Riley just from, again, our small school. Uh, yeah. There's all kinds of other ones, Model UN, Mock Trial, and they go to DC and New York every year and compete. Uh, so a lot of different ways to get involved on a lot of different levels. Service and leadership are very big on campus. We love leadership so much. We made it a minor. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, athletics. I'll let you talk about this. Oh, yeah. As we mentioned before, again, uh, Division Three athletics uh, with, with our new freshman class that we just brought in, we had a really big freshman class that 40% actually bumped up to about 50% athletes this year because we had so many freshman athletes. Uh, so we have 21 different varsity sports on campus, a big variety of them. Uh, some of the newest ones, uh, the sport I coach, actually women's lacrosse is one of our newest ones on campus, along with men's and women's swimming and diving. Uh, but again, a lot of the much more uh, standard traditional ones you see at a lot of schools, soccer, baseball, basketball, football, uh, and cheerleading, a lot of great ways to kind of get involved. Uh, again, being uh, an athlete on campus was a great experience with it. Uh, and then it's always fun seeing uh, kind of all of the other sports teams, all the other student body come out to all of the sporting events with homecoming, pep rallies, uh, evening basketball games where everyone would go to Saga and get dinner. And then everyone would always go over to the gym afterwards for the six or seven o'clock tip off of a volleyball match or a basketball game. So it was always a lot of fun. Awesome. All right. The fun stuff that everybody likes to talk about. If you have not applied, our middle 50% of like students, they usually come in with a 2.9 or 3.2 GPA. Obviously we have some above and obviously we have some below, but that's where literally half of our students are in that, that kind of category. Um, ACT scores 19 to 25 and then SAT 1020 to 1190. Once again, these are just where half of our students come from. We've had some above and we had some below. Uh, I know recently we've just made the decision to be test optional. If you have a 2.8 
uh, GPA or higher. So just because it's harder to get a test with COVID and everything. Um, so if you fall in that category, you don't necessarily have to submit your test scores. I still recommend it, but it is a choice. Um, application evaluation process. We're looking at your overall high school preparation, test score evaluation, and background experiences. I know me as a person who reads applications day in and day out, I want to see kind of what your personality is through your application. Uh, we do have a writing prompt that's optional, but I like to just kind of get to know what are you involved in? Can you manage your time if you're an athlete? Like, what does your grades look like compared to like non-athlete, I guess? Um, do you manage your time well, sort of, if that makes sense. How to apply. So you can either apply through the Franklin College application on our website um, or the Common App. I know somebody asked me a while ago if one held more value than the other. They don't. They're the same. We will take them both. Um, and then you will need your, at least your high school transcripts, unless you have a GPA of just below 2.8, then you will need your test scores as well. The value of Franklin College education. Everybody loves this one. <laughs> um, all right. So right down here, you're looking at our total costs, our kind of pocket number, if you will, um, is around 4344. Um, so yes, that might look like a lot of money, but as a person who graduated from a small private liberal arts school, and Chris also did, I can tell you that smaller private liberal arts schools often give you more money. <laughs> uh, it was the cheapest option for me where I went, and I'm sure probably the same for you. But uh, every student at Franklin does receive some form of merit scholarship. I think that also makes us very unique. Uh, that merit award ranges anywhere from 7000 to 18000 It's very easy to cut this almost in half, if not in half, just based off of that alone. Um, a couple of scholarship opportunities that you'll see on the next slide are listed below. Uh, the Ben Franklin was on the last slide as well. That is if you have, basically if you're admitted with distinction, uh, which means you have a GPA of 3.9 or higher, and then an SAT score of 1320, or an ACT score of 28 composite, I should say, for ACT and SAT. Um, but you'll be invited to uh, interview with that. I mean, that's like a whole process in and of itself. It is an honor if you're, if, if you're able to do that, and that is a full tuition scholarship opportunity. Uh, we also have an option if you do come and you don't get that, you usually will walk away with an extra thousand or two thousand just for participating in the interviews. So that's a big honor. If you're invited to that, I highly, highly, highly recommend coming. Um, and then you can see a couple of our other priority scholarships is what I would call them, I guess, down here and their deadlines. I would just take a look at that or take a screenshot of that for sure. I just know we're running out of time, so I don't want to like <laughs> take too much time. Here are some of our most important dates and deadlines. Uh, we are rolling admission, so you could literally apply the day before and like as long as you have all of your stuff, I guess, by that day you could get in. Uh, but we do have the FAFSA that just opened up a couple of weeks ago. So that will end April 15th. Make sure you file your FAFSA. That's like, if I could give any freshman any advice, file your FAFSA and do it early if you can. Um, just because there's more aid available in the beginning of the year than there is at the end of the year. Like at the beginning of the year, there's like a big pocket and then it just gets smaller and smaller. Just do it sooner rather than later. Same with our scholarships. Our, um, our what did I say? A priority scholarship deadline is December 1st. So most of our scholarships are kind of gone after December 1st. We do still have some, but the amount, are, they're, they just go away. Like I said, they start this big and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller as the year goes on. So apply sooner rather than later, especially apply before December 1st if you can. And then May 1st is our enrollment deposit deadline. All right, that's kind of, that's, I was not expecting to get through about those last ones as quick as I did. Oh, I was just like, oh no, we're almost out of time. I didn't want to leave everybody hanging. Um, if you want to have more information, I know I will, well, I'll just shout out. You could go to admissions at franklincollege.edu. You can send any email there. It'll either come to Chris or I or your, your admissions counselor that would be working with you. You could also follow us at these places on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I highly recommend doing that. Do you have anything to say at the end? I don't know. Do you have anything to finish it up? <laughs> you wrapped it up perfect. Perfect. I tried. Other than that, it's, yeah, come to Franklin. Come visit. We love visitors. We're, oh, we're doing open visits right now, but yeah. Love it. Amazing presentation. Who wouldn't want to go to Franklin College with these two at the helm of admissions, right? So <laughs> thank you, Chris and Kelly, for your time tonight. I'm going to go and share my screen for just some last minute information for Perfect. any participants who are with us.
Okay, so when you all uh, click out and exit, there'll be a quick four question circuit that will appear. Please fill that out so we can make sure that we're serving you in the way that you would like to be served and that this is comprehensive for you. Um, if you haven't, check out the website for any additional sessions that you may want to sign up for, but also to see any recorded sessions that you may have missed before or didn't realize that you could sign up for. Um, they will be available and then this recording will be available around a week out. So around this time next week, you can. Um, see this presentation specifically and any others that were tonight during the same time. Other than that, we'll call it a night. Enjoy, be safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.